last one, the last projection that we're going to do is called the scalp line. This is actually an oblique position of the body, but it's used for the shoulder and it's used for the scapula. And the reason is we're putting the scapula in a true lateral position. So if we were using this as part of a scapula series, then the scapula would be lateral and we call it a lateral scapula. We're doing this as part of a routine shoulder series. So it's an oblique because the shoulder is actually oblique. And that's the area we're interested in is the shoulder. For this, we're keeping our collimation open to 10 by 12, but this 10 by 12 is going to be lengthwise. So y'all, okay, just step back just a second. Let me show you something. So 10 by 12 lengthwise is the 12 is your length, right? It's longer versus what? You need to take our IR and you need to turn it lengthwise. The reason that we're doing this 10 by 12 lengthwise I just messed that up my automatic combination, is because we're going to include the scapula coming into 10 inches here. So I'm going to show you this with the skeleton, then I'm going to bring Deja back. Remember that the scapula, is it straight across the back? It's angled, right? So what we're trying to do here is we're looking for dislocations. It's very common for people to throw their shoulder out of joint. You ever heard of somebody doing that before? And that's dislocating the shoulder. The shoulder can dislocate anteriorly or posteriorly. So we do a scalp Y to look for that. Well, what we have to do with this is we have to get the body of the scapula in a true lateral. So that means you're going to have to look and, and touch on your patient and turn their body. And it's about, the book says 45 to 60 degree angle of the body. Well, heck y'all, that's 15 degree difference. How do you know if you're going 45 or you're going 60? You got to look at this scapula and you got to make sure you got the body straight. All right. So here, I'm turning my patient. Scapula is going to be nice and lateral. He's not going to be exact, but I do think it's good for you to be able to see that the scapula is truly lateral. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take an image to where scapula is lateral, but my central ray is coming through pretty much the AC joint. Okay? So you're going to have to come and you're going to feel the acromion. You're going to feel the end of the uh, clavicle. And you're going to do your hand like this, and this line should be coming straight through it, just like you see here. If you stand straight in front, you'll see that that longitudinal line is coming through my hand. All right. Another thing you can do is you can use the superior angle of the scapula to check and make sure you have it lateral. And if this superior angle and this AC joint line up and make a line, then you're going to get your scap Y. Y'all, the reason they call this a scap Y is because the acromion, okay, and the coracoid make the top of the Y, the body of the scapula and the humerus, let me show you over here, make the body of the Y. Can y'all see the Y here? So this is actually dislocated, which is why the humerus, the body of the humerus, you might have to come around while I can see this is. The body of the humerus and the body of the scapula are not superimposed like they should be for a scapula. It's because this one is dislocated. We'll talk about that in a second. But can y'all still see here and here are your ends of your, or the top of your Y? All right, so this is the coracoid. This is the acromion. This is the body of the scapula. We're trying to align the humeral head right over that Y and the body of the humerus right over the body of the scapula. So we keep the patient's arm right down by their side. And if you look in your book, if you look right here, this is actually what it should look like if there's no dislocation. Acromion, 
coracoid. Can you see the humeral head there? And the body of the humerus aligned with the body of the scapula. But you gotta have the angle, angle of the scapula, the angle of the hem, everything has to align perfectly for you to get that pretty Y. All right? So, when I told you this is done for dislocation, this is dislocated anteriorly. An anterior dislocation is also known as a subcoracoid dislocation. This is the coracoid process. If the humeral head is underneath the coracoid, that tells you it's a subcoracoid. Below the coracoid, that's an anterior dislocation. If the humeral head were back here, underneath the acromion, that would be a subacromion dislocation, which is a posterior dislocation. Y'all gotta know that. That's registry, that's test. Big question there, okay? Now, which dislocation is where? Where do you find it? Uh, where do you find the humeral head for an anterior dislocation and a posterior dislocation? Which projection is done to see dislocation of the shoulder? Step one. Yes. So let's give me a patient and let's put some body up here to perform the step one. All right, David. Step down. Remember, what is my collimation for this? Say louder. 10 by 12 what? Lengthwise. All right, so we're gonna bring our patient up here. I'm gonna get you to leave your hand down by your side and turn your body away from me. Put your shoulder all the way up against that board. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn her until I get her scapula. Turn your body. Keep that shoulder and your arm right down by your side. Turn her until I get her scapula nice and lateral. You can take, you can find the superior angle of your scapula, which is right here, and palpate that. And you can find the acromion, okay, which is coming right here, or the AC joint. If you align your superior angle of your scapula and the AC joint, and they make a line perpendicular to your IR, that will give you your scalp Y. All right. And then you're gonna be exiting out of the joint space, which is going to be higher than where I'm at right now. Another thing you can do is make sure your body of your scapula is straight. You can find the lateral end of your scapula and the acromion, and you can make sure this line is coming straight through the middle of your fingers. What I'm trying to do is get the body of the scapula lateral over the humeral head and it, the superior angle of the scapula and the AC joint, if they're aligned, that will give you that scap Y. Your humeral head should fall right in between the acromion and the coracoid process. Hold your breath, don't breathe, don't move. Make sure you got inferior angle of the scapula included on this image. That's why we keep that 12 inches lengthwise. I'm going to have my patient shielded. I would mark this. This is her right. Put my right marker and I'm over my center chamber there. Hold your breath. Beep. You can breathe and relax. Okay. 